nothing like a good DHH article. Hey, so I remember when this all came out, the amount of videos in the internets that that shot up from DHH leaving the cloud providers and doing on-prem hosting, the amount of shit I saw on Twitter and people just dunking on him left and right was very intense. So it's actually pretty cool to see this basic conclusion of like, hey, this is what happened. This is where we're going. Let's see exactly what has happened. We finished pulling seven cloud apps, including Hey, out of AWS and onto our own hardware last summer. But it took, but it took until the end of the year for all the long-term contract commitments to end. So 2024 has been the first clean year of savings. And we've been pleasantly surprised that they've been even better than originally estimated. Okay. Okay. For 2024, we brought the cloud bill down from the original $3.2 million a year to a rate of $1.3 million. That's the saving of almost $2 million per year for our setup. The reason it's more than our original estimate of $7 million over five years is that we got away with putting all the new hardware into existing data center racks and power limits. By the way, $2 million a year, you can easily set up a team for less than $2 million a year to fix these problems and to ensure that you have a good running item and to have people planning ahead and all that stuff. Like you're saving money. Return to prem. I mean, on prem is kind of interesting. Uh, 10 well paid engineers. Not sure about 10 well paid engineers because a lot of people forget the cost. So a lot of people don't understand stuff, right? Whenever you hire an engineer, let's just say you hire this person for 100K. And let's say you do this for three people. Well, what happens here? Well, who's going to manage all these people? Someone's going to manage them. This could be an unknown amount of some percentage of management cost. On top of that, this flows upwards because now decision-making has to flow down to what these people are doing. So there's a percentage of cost of time, whether it's a brand new manager or part of a manager's time. Nonetheless, it is a cost that is associated that eventually you have to hire your own manager. On top of that, you also have HR costs that are associated with this. Not only that, you also have insurance that is going to be on top of this, right? There's like a whole bunch of like stuff that kind of all flows into this. If you're a physically, if you're a located place, you also have office space, right? If you require work from office, you also have office space that flows into this. There's, it's, it's much more complicated. A hundred K engineer can end up costing 200 K in total, like total costs. Like you're, it's not free. A lot of people kind of forget about all those, all those things. You also have to pay, uh, like if you're in the States, you have to pay social security income. So, that means 6% of this. So that means there's an extra, you know, there's just like a bonus 6K or whatever it is on top of the cost at 100 grand for every employee that you have. So if you have 1,000 employees, you're paying $6 million a year. If they're all, if the average pay is $100,000, you're paying, you're, you have a, what's it called? A $6 million bill just on that. Yeah. And yeah, also health insurance. I put that in there, insurance, right? There's also like uh, other types of insurance, employee insurance. And operating insurance to make sure that if something happens, you don't do that. There's also legal that's going to be in all of this that's going to potentially be involved at some point. There's like a lot of stuff that you have to remember. There's also unemployment. You also have a matched 401k if they offer that, right? There's a lot of stuff that goes into the cost of an employee. So $2 million a year, you probably can get some good, you can get, you can definitely get a handful of engineers doing some good stuff, right? And probably taking you to a better level being very resilient, making sure all the supplies are in hand. So it's totally possible. And if your company grows, then that number goes up, right? The expenditure on all the new Dell hardware is about $700,000 in the end, was also entirely recouped during 2023 while the long-term community slowly rolled off. Think about that for a second. This is the gear we expect to use for the next five years, maybe even seven years, all paid off from savings accrued during the second half of 2023. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, I, you definitely got to also put in the man hours, though, the cost of just running those things. I think you got to put it, all that in there. I don't know what the cost is. Let's see. But it's about to get sweeter still. The remaining $1.3 million we still spend on cloud services is all from AWS S3. We're, uh, while all our former cloud compute and managed database search and services were on a one-year commitment contracts, our file storage has been locked into a four-year contract since 2021, which doesn't expire until next summer. So that's when the plan to be... Oh, so that's when we plan to uh, pull, be out. Oh, oh. Well, oh, that's a... First off, that's a lot of money, man. That's a lot of S3. That's a lot of S3 going on right there. We store about 10 petabytes of data in S3 now. That's a, dude, I'd petabyte too if I saw, I mean, I'd kill a byte or I'd petabyte seeing that much. That includes a lot of super critical customer files, uh, like for Basecamp and Hey, stored in duplicate via separate regions. We use a mixture of storage classes to get an optimized solution that weighs uh, reliability, access, and cost. But it's still well over a million dollars to keep all this data there. And that's after be, uh, the big long-term commitment discounts. Hmm. 
Okay. Let's see, when we move out next summer, we'll be moving to a dual DC peer storage setup with a combined 18 petabytes of capacity. That's so much memory, by the way. Dude, that's just like, I have a hard time thinking in that size because like everything I do is just much smaller. So it's just like, that's just such a big ass number in my brain, right? This setup will cost about the same as a year's worth of AWS S3 for the initial hardware. But thanks to the incredible density and power efficiency of the pure flash arrays, we can also fit these in uh, within our existing data center racks. So ongoing costs are going to be the modest service contracts, and we expect to save another $4 million over five years. Dude, that's crazy. That's a lot of money. This brings our total projected savings from the combined cloud exit to well over $10 million over five years while getting faster compute and much more storage. I mean, I wonder how uh, the reliability that has to be a lot of effort. I'm curious if they're going to like, I, I assume they're going to use some sort of S3 style um, storage like item, I assume, so they don't have to change their API. For reference, 18 petabytes is nearly half the size of the entire internet archives. That's a lot. See, like I said, it's a big number in my brain. I just received $600 to switch for a flight after uh, the one I was on. How's everyone else doing? Hey, nice. Well done. Welcome. I think three different data centers, uh, US and EU. That's good. I don't think the electric bill is $1 million a year. I don't think the electric bill is $1 million a year. Uh, now, as with all things cloud and on-prem, it's never fully apples to apples. If you're entirely in the cloud and have no existing data center racks, you'll pay... Let's see, you'll pay to rent those as well, but you'll probably be shocked at how cheap it is compared to the cloud. And even for our saving estimates, the target keeps moving as we require more hardware and more storage as Basecamp and Hay continues to grow over the years. Yeah, so if they keep growing, then this number, especially if they have a, a huge amount of room to continue to operate, that number just goes northward with no additional costs effectively. It's still remarkable that we're able to reap the savings of this magnitude from leaving the cloud. We've been out for just over a year now, and the team managing everything is still the same. Yeah, I guess, I mean, to be completely fair, you need a team of people to manage your AWS stuff as well, right? Like, that's not even, like, it's not even a fair thing to say that you go from zero DevOps to have to do your DevOps whenever it comes to, uh, whenever it comes to on-prem. You already have some level of infrastructure engineer and cloud engineering, I don't know what the cost is, but it sounds like they they didn't uh, actually, AWS is a nightmare in my opinion. Well, there's some pretty good managed services. I think if you really understand AWS, it's probably a lot easier to be good at it. We're admitting that DevOps is real now. We go back and forth. DevOps isn't real. It can't hurt you. Is DevOps in the room? It also just killed your company. You're bad for not planning about it. <laughs> you actually just spent a bajillion dollars. Your fault. Right. Uh, there is no hidden dragons of additional workload associated with the exit that require us to balloon the team, as some spectators speculated when we announced it. All the answers in our bleak, uh, big cloud exit fact uh, continue to hold. Oh, that's actually really cool. Let's see this. Because that's actually what I'm curious about, which is what is the, um, let's see, uh, team? Is there the word team? Let's see. Okay, there you go. Won't your hardware savings be swallowed by a bigger team? I think this is like, this is the number one question that we all had. No, because we didn't change the team composition after the cloud exit. The same people who were operating Hay and Basecamp and the other apps in the cloud are now operating them on our own hardware. If you provide enough machines, I don't see how this, I, I assume you could do that. If you had three people already working on it, I assume you could probably make that change. It's a beautiful cost exploration graph. It is. That was a beautiful graph. This is cool. Open search services, relational database services, EC2 instances. I love how open they are, by the way. I love how open they are when it comes to like their cost and everything. This is super cool. Congratulations on them, by the way. This is just such a W. And I'm, I think one thing I really hate about the internet is that when you offer something that's different, right? Like right now, the big push for everything is, of course, these these delicious um, these delicious Lambda functions. Everything in the cloud, uh, you should never run anything. Everything should be stateless right? Everything is this way. You should just write node applications from the ground up and that's the way it is. And that's all you do. And if you need something to be able to trigger stuff in, then you better be hitting that SNS and that SQS. Oh, you need to be able to store stuff. Then you better be hitting it in that S3. If you're going to be doing this right, like there's like this kind of prescribed way of thinking that everyone has generally agreed to. And I think there's a lot of convenience in this. I'm not, I'm not going against saying that this, there isn't a lot of convenience here, but it's wild that the moment you, the moment you cross this line of dogma, like people like throw in words like evil. Like it's a strange mentality to have. Like when I see this, when I saw that they were doing this, I was like, dude, good luck. I mean, I I hear this is a hard problem and I think there is a lot of challenges that you don't have to think about. Like when you're in this world, you don't have to think about, oh shit, one of our computers have failed. We need to replace it, right? 
Oh, they hate DHH on Twitter. Oh, yeah. And they also just hate DHH on Twitter, despite the man being like super paced. All right. He's actually pretty great. Uh, they're using one physical machine for multiple services. It sounds crazy. I know. It sounds crazy. It's healthy to have a paradigm shift, but it's wild how that the moment you cross this line, like people get pissed. Like to me, if someone crosses this line, they say they're going to do it on prem. My response is, dude, write me in a year and tell me how that went. I want to know, was it better? Is it just a lie? Have we been lied to over here? Or is this actually also good in a different way? Do you recommend, when do you recommend taking this jump? Why'd you jump now instead of before? Like, you know, start asking all these questions. Like why? I want to know why, why would you do this? People are afraid when people think different. I know it's kind of wild. Uh, this is a bald move, a bald, a bald move. And I respect it. Now I want my servers. Uh, I want my servers in my basement and you can do that. No questions. Bad by cloud. Yeah, I know. It kind of feels like we've almost been, these are one of those unknown knowns that I talk about all the time, right? Known knowns, known unknowns, unknown unknowns, and then unknown knowns. Like you just believe this, but why do you believe it? Why do you think that it's so bad to do something versus so good to do it a different way? Well, because at some point, somebody said to do it. This is actually not Donald Rumsfeld. So Donald Rumsfeld didn't even finish that thought, buddy, right? Uh, another uh, great example of running bare, uh, bare, uh, bare metal off cloud. This one is from uh, is a Br Brazil mentioned. Nice, nice. I might read that in my spare time. All right, anyways, let's keep on going. It still works though. Uh, that uh, DHH usually never gets like a weird kind of. I, I must either I can't read or he can't write one of the two. He usually writes good, so that's why I'm just doubting myself. Running apps the size of Basecamp and Hay across two data centers as soon as. Or, and soon at least one more internationally requires a substantial and dedicated crew. There's always work to be done maintaining all these applications, databases, virtual machines, and yes, occasionally even requesting a power supply to drive or, or drive swap on a machine, throwing a warm light, uh, but our white gloves at deft take care of that. But the most, let's see, but most of the work was something we had to do in the cloud as well. Since we originally uh, announced our plans to leave the cloud, there has been a surge of interest in doing the same across the industry. The model of 2010s and early 2020s, all cloud, everything, all the time, seems to finally have peaked. And thank heavens for that. The cloud can still make a lot of sense, though, especially in the very early days when you don't even need a whole computer or are unsure whether you, you're, you'll still be in business by the end of the year. Or when you're dealing with enormous fluctuations in load, like what motivated Amazon to create AWS in the first place. Fair take, by the way. That's a fair take. I actually really like that take. Like that, that's good. Like notice that he he is even giving affordances in the first place to AWS and all this. Even giving affordances to this entire business right here, saying no, actually you can use this. You there's totally reasons to use it. Serverless is like a newborn baby who's de uh, destined to die in 15 minutes. I don't know about that, and that's a horrible. I'm not gonna lie to you. That's a crazy statement you just said. Um, do you think there will ever be a day that AWS will become big enough that it would be too much of a risk to leave in private hands and forcefully taken over by the government? Um, I can't imagine that. That'd be crazy if the government forcefully took over AWS. We're in, like we're, we're having government seize the means, right? That's usually typically not a good place to be. Typically, you don't want that to happen. It's almost like we have a term for this, a certain form of government that takes a hold. If only I knew what it would be. Communism, no, that'd be giving it to the people. The people. If only there was, only if there was a term for this. Um, let's see. Uh, but as soon as the cloud bills start to become substantial, I think you owe it to yourself, your investors, and the common business sense to at least do the math. How much are we spending? What would it cost to, uh, let's see, to buy these comp computers instead of renting them? Well, I think something you could do is just take one service off, right? Get your feet wet. You have to, like, a lot of people have various, at least things running. You got a job that runs off the clouds, Okay, well, maybe you just have this job run in a in a in like off the clouds into something that you kind of more like at least a VPS. Start with a VPS. Start simple. Maybe step your way into on prem. Like that's <laughs> shh shh, Sergeant Pepper. You know, like start like start with something. It's not that crazy to do. Uh, could we try moving some part of our setup onto our own hardware? Maybe using Kamal or a similar tool. The potential savings uh, from these answers can be shocking. At 37 Signals, we're looking forward to literally deleting our AWS account come this summer, and remain let's see, but remain grateful for the service and the lessons we learned while using the platform. It's obvious why Amazon continues to lead in the cloud, and I'm also grateful that it's now entirely free to move your data out of S3. If you're leaving the platform for good, makes the math even better. So long. And thanks for all the fish. Don't understand that last sentence. Oh, unless if he's saying, teach a man to fish. And he gets, is that what he's saying? It's a little bit confusing at the end. It's kind of like the inversion of that argument. 
Uh, you, you got a book to read? Oh, I've never read The Hitchhiker's Guide. I've never actually read The uh, Hitchhiker's Dude, Dudes on Culture. I've never read it. I've read plenty of the Dune books. Hey, have you read Wheel of Time? I'm almost done with book 11, okay? I'm just cultured in a different way. Do you know how many, you know how many effing pages are in Wheel of Time? I know. I got to still do The Hitchhiker's Guide. I actually haven't, okay? I, have, I know this is the most offensive thing ever. I know. The Wheel of Time is great. All right. Hey, the name. The name. You know what the name is. 